many did you manage? Um, uh, you, you, I, I, I presume you submitted all your six project, all your six uh, papers. papers. Uh, uh, yes, got, probably more than that. <laughs> probably more than. <laughs> you got, you yeah. got a, all, if not more, uh, published. Yeah. But I'm curious to hear what projects did you manage? What projects? Okay, so it was a big grant, mm -hmm. and it had. Diff, I think five components. Okay. So I was managing a component which was looking at maternal child health. Right. So within within this big grant, um, what did what did you used to call them themes or sub themes? Mm -hmm. So they were like pieces that made up the big. Mm -hmm. And now each of these pieces was like an independent mm -hmm. uh, project. Mm -hmm. So I was assigned a project on maternal child health. Now remember when I came, my interest was on non-communicable diseases. Uh, yeah. So I even remember doing the interview asking. Um, I didn't want to be assigned malaria for some reason. Mm. My husband is a malaria scientist, mm. but uh, malaria, HIV, TB mm. are those things which are very important to Africa. Mm. They are big problems, but they've been put ahead of everything else. Mm. So I didn't want to be in that thing which everybody does. LCD. Everybody does malaria, yeah. everybody does TB, everybody does HIV. Yeah. Global health, malaria, when you say mm. global health, everybody thinks Everyone it. thinks so about I didn't want to be, industry, I yeah. didn't want, so I told them, mm. uh, I said, well, how, how does this work during mm. the interview? They said, no, you, you'll be assigned a project. I said, I hope it's not malaria. Mm. They, they laughed. I said, mm. oh, we don't have any malaria project. I said, okay, thank God. I don't want to be assigned malaria. Mm. So I was assigned a maternal child health mm -hmm. project mm. to work on. Mm. And so we started, you know, you call, as I said, it's about data collection, making sure you have the right tools, mm. you get approvals, you work mm -hmm. with the community, you supervise a big team of people collecting data, mm. uh, you work with the data team mm. to be sure that the data is good. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, other things are happening, um, you're writing papers, you're going for conferences and all that. Mm. Now, one thing which is unique about APHRC as well, the postdoc is an entry point for you to join the organization. Mm. And remember, I talked about research leadership. Mm -hmm. So we have an expectation that by the time you finish the two years, mm. you should have figured out what you want to do, mm. who you want to be mm. as a scientist. Mm. Because going back to what I said about the PhD, mm. I did a PhD on migrants mm. in Germany. So Completely I could be, different. I could decide to be a migration researcher. Mm. But I had already decided I want to be a non-communicable disease mm. researcher. Mm. Remember the postdoc project that brought me is already funded. It's mm. not on non-communicable yeah. diseases. Yeah. It's on maternal child health. Mm. So this gives you space mm. to practice your research skills, mm. to start building your profile. Mm. But within the time that you have to write six papers and manage a project, mm. you should find, find time mm. to define the things that you want to do. In mm. this case, it was non-communicable diseases. Mm. Hmm. No one is going to sit down and write the non-communicable disease project for you so mm. that you can do it. Mm. So you have to find time and create time wow. to say, how will I become a non-communicable disease researcher. researcher? In here at APHRC. At APHRC. Yeah. But no one is paying you yeah, for, to, that. To, to, for that. So yeah. it's something you have so to create. So that's your extra time. Yeah. Uh, your extra <clears throat> motivation. Your extra uh, motivation. And look potentially also look for resources for that if you exactly want. yeah mm -hmm. if you're going to mm -hmm. and so the way the system is set up mm -hmm. um that's not an ex it's not there's no expectation that as a postdoc you'll get a grant mm -hmm. there's none mm -hmm. if you do then you're fast tracked because the grant is an expectation for the next level so if Which... you're already sure that you can get a grant while you're a postdoc it means you're operating at that level so they'll fast track you okay so both me and my husband got fast tracked out of the postdoc. Because <laughs> oh, you, 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 you got, we got grants. You got grants while still at uh, while still a postdoc. Oh wow! Yeah. Within within what period? Within the first mm, year or the second? No, year? No, no, within the second year. Oh, yeah. He got fast tracked fast. Oh. Great. But I think I spent like one year, so maybe he, six months. His area of interest was malaria. Yes. Okay. Mm, yeah. Oh. So that and that's that's something which is really. I think which has served the organization very well That's really because nice. it allows you to define yourself yeah. but you're not defined by the money which is there yeah you're not defined by That's what nice. what is being done already mm. you think something is important mm. and then you find you supported and given the opportunity to pursue mm. it mm. as an mm. independent mm. um and the world is your oyster really yeah that sort of like <clears> what <throat> and for new entrants you're if you're given that kind of opportunity you're like yeah. i can define what i want you can define what you it want is, but, yeah. but yet again i'm being given sort of like a retainer for 
two, two, two years. For at three least two years. years, yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't end at two years. So when you finish the two years postdoc, yeah. um, and you've submitted six papers, yeah. four of them are published. Yeah. And then you've done good project management. Mm. Then you can apply now for a position because mm. the other one is a fellowship. Mm. And the first position is called associate mm -hmm. research scientist it's for mm -hmm. three years. Mm -hmm. So this, there are similarities between the postdoc mm -hmm. and associate research scientist. You're mm -hmm. still an early career researcher. Mm -hmm and you're still having mentorship and mm. support. Mm. And that's additional time for you to define yourself mm. and to get the grant. Mm. If you didn't manage to get the grant as a postdoc, mm. make up your mind what mm. it is you want to be, mm. because you'll still be assigned the funded project, mm. which may be completely off mm. from something that interests you mm. as, a, as a researcher. Mm. So, but it's still, you still are able to create time mm. within the three years. Mm. Now to say, I want to be a researcher on this this mm. and then now find opportunities that will make you that researcher mm. you mm. only become a researcher on something by getting a grant to do research true. on it mm. so you have two years as a postdoc three years as an associate mm. to make to define yourself mm. so mm. that by the time the five years are over mm. at least you have mm. like defined yourself mm. i always tell people we want a keyword mm. when you say catherine people mm. should think associate with this non-communicable disease yeah and if it doesn't happen it's very mm. hard to progress at a phrc mm. Mm. After those five years, mm. you should have, there should be a keyword associated with you mm. as an area of research interest. Mm. So for me, my very early interests were non-communicable diseases. When mm. I came to APHRC, there was no research on non-communicable diseases. Mm. And as a postdoc, mm. during my two years, mm. I got a fellowship mm. that allowed me to do the first project on non-communicable diseases mm. at APHRC. Mm. And that was the beginning point of um, my career mm. as a non-communicable disease researcher, researcher. <laughs> yeah mm. and uh, but of course things keep on happening mm. so i don't think i'm a non-communicable disease researcher anymore <laughs> <laughs> i'm now a lot of other things yeah but at least it gives you a foundation yeah um on which to define yourself yeah uh, yeah uh, <laughs> and, and so you got this grant um do you want to get into that <laughs> uh, the details of that grant i'm curious how <laughs> how for someone who's starting off, what, yeah. what, what did that look like for you? Who, who, who did you go looking for to get and how did you get it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I think one thing which was very interesting, maybe I need, I need to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Something which was um, like coming down from up there and like sitting down on earth mm -hmm. when we come to APHLC mm -hmm. is before when I was doing my PhD, PhD was like the end. Yeah. Like once you finish your PhD, you've arrived. Mm -hmm. When you come to APHLC, PhD is the beginning. The beginning once beginning. you finish your PhD, you're beginning your yeah. research career. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very tough pill to swallow because mm. as I said, when I was doing my PhD, if I had gone back to my university, I would have been maybe head of department mm. or, you know, this or that. Mm. So your, your outlook to life is of somebody who has arrived. Mm. I'm done. But mm. when you come, when we, when we came to APHLC, the way they treat you as a postdoc, mm. you're like, your, it is made very clear to you that you're just beginning. Yeah. You're not anywhere. So don't don't assume that you've arrived anywhere. Yeah. You're just beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a very tough pill to swallow yeah. when you've come from a different environment. But yeah. then after some time, you see people have been here for 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. People have multi-million dollar grants. They have 200 papers. You just have seven. Yeah. They're like, okay, that's, it's true. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still beginning. Yeah. So then now you start asking yourself, how did these people get here? Yeah. How did... The people who are here who had been there for 15 years, how yeah. did they get here? Yeah. Um, that's when you realize, okay, number one, you need to establish a profile. You need to establish some kind of credibility. You need to define yourself. It's very hard to succeed as a scientist if you don't have a niche. Yeah. Then how do you get into a niche? It's a cycle. Yeah. You publish papers around something. Yeah. Then you look for grant opportunities. Yeah. They look at your CV and your profile. Mm. If your CV is not good enough, you don't get the grant, mm. but then you can't get a strong CV without a grant. Mm. So it's a balance. Like you, you have to navigate this, mm. um, like cycle yeah. until you manage to sort of break, break into the back. cycle. Mm. Yeah. So the opportunities for an early career researcher who is a, a postdoc mm. or the one we call the associate mm. are usually fellowships also. Mm. So there are funders who give training fellowships mm -hmm. for early career researchers. Mm -hmm. So I applied for what is known as a welcome trust. Okay. training fellowship okay 
So Wellcome Trust is one of the biggest science funders mm. um, in the UK, but also in the world, I would mm. say. Mm. And so getting a Wellcome Trust fellowship is a big deal. Oh, a big deal. <laughs> it mm. was a big deal. Mm. And so I um, I saw the uh, advert. I said, mm. OK, let me see. Let me apply. Mm. And I sat down, designed the project. Mm. But then since it's a fellowship, you need the sponsor, you need the mentor, mm. you need the supervisor. Mm. So I was actually Googling people mm. because I, my fellowship was in 2008 mm. and at that time non-communicable disease research in Africa was it's still very very rudimentary mm. so like getting African experts at that time mm. was not easy mm. because there was um, even research institutions doing non-communicable disease research there were very few mm. so I was googling mm. looking for mentors and sponsors mm. um, from all over the world mm. and then I landed on some people in UK some never responded to my email, some mm. responded. Mm. And so they accepted to be on my application. So we applied. You do the first step, preliminary application. If you pass through that, then they ask you to do a full application. I did that. Then you're invited for an interview. Mm. Um, yeah. So if you're invited to do a full application, it's success. Because mm. not everybody yeah. gets invited. Yeah. Yeah. When you do the full MC application the concept, and yeah. you are invited for the for the interview, that's that also success because there's yeah. a huge attrition at that rate. Yeah. Now when you succeed, oh my God. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a like a uh, celebration. It's what? no mean feat. I think like eleven percent of mm. people who do interviews mm. are the ones who get the fellowship. Mm. So um, that was. That was huge. Huge, like. Uh, I don't know. Mm. VP, V power. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like V power fuel, like in my wings. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really huge. Like, that was amazing. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, 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 and so you, how do you then begin splitting your time to yeah. manage this new Welcome Trust grant? What you've already been given. Mm -hmm. it, this is your second year of the fellowship. The fellowship, yeah. How does, how does, how does it all come together? Uh, okay, because APHRC, one of the biggest constraints we have is our funding model. Mm -hmm. So we get people because somebody has given us a grant to pay for their time. Mm. So now the fellowship was paying for all my time. Mm. So I dropped. Uh, I dropped the projects I was managing and then they had else. to hire somebody else okay. to manage those projects. Right. Okay. And then I could focus on my, on, on on my fellowship okay. because it was paying. Makes sense. It was paying 100% of my time. time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That and that's like the best thing that can happen to you. Yeah. Because you have one project. Yeah. Your time is fully covered. Yeah. For three years. Yeah. So I can afford to focus, to focus exclusively. Yeah. I can afford to publish as much as much as I want. I yeah. can afford to apply for more grants. Yeah. Which I did. Yeah. Because like um I'm not attending three meetings for because di for different, different projects, projects and working with different teams and yeah. supervising different teams. Yeah. yeah. So it's a huge, huge advantage if so you're able to you hire for your for your project, you supervise yeah. for your project. Yeah. Um.